Thompson. I'm assistant professor of graphic design at Youngstown State University, and I will allow my uh, friend to introduce himself. And um, I'm Melissa Hackett, and I am the creative arts and design instructor at a career technical high school called the Mahoney County Career and Technical Center, which is about 20 minutes from Youngstown State. So Melissa and I do a lot of work together, and our presentation today is basically uh, a documentation of our experiences with uh, our merge programming. So um, I wanted to start with uh, just talking about recruitment and retention on the university level. Of course, we're all familiar with the trials and tribulations of that, and uh, how much of a pain in the ass it is to do, and uh, how at times it's difficult to, you know, seed away your uh, research time uh, to tend to enrollment. Um, for whatever reason, we're all experiencing it across the board, be it tuition costs, perception of uh, art and design degrees, programs, the design industry, whatever it is, um, it's there and it's, it's a real bear to work against. Um, but uh, perhaps most importantly, at least so far as I'm concerned, one of the most important things is that uh, faculty uh, don't feel they have the time for it or don't want to have the time for it or don't think it's their job. And quite frankly, it's not their job. Colleges employ people for admissions for a reason. But uh, if you're in a, in a, a smaller uh, sized program, you kind of have to do this. Um, and at Youngstown, we're a department of 16. We have a really large program, uh, but we are still being asked to go out to high schools and recruit. And um, generally, despite that need, it still doesn't happen. Uh, I'm one of the only folks that, that does this <clears throat> actively. Um, and I wanted to you know, just highlight uh, this, this particular idea. Um, time reconciliation. So we're all doing research, we're all doing very busy, we're all very busy doing important, critical things, not only for ourselves, especially if you're pre-tenured, but you know, maybe you're involved in a grant or some time-sensitive um, research. How do you reconcile time lost uh, when you're out there talking to high schoolers? It's, it, it's a hard thing to, to go to a high school and talk to students who may otherwise not really be interested in anything you have to say and leave that situation and be like, well, I'll never see a return on that or I'll never understand what the return is. I won't see it. So it's like you go there, you do it. In some cases, it might be half-hearted. Um, it's tough. So for me... I want you to get, you know, I wanted to get the best out of my sales pitches to your students, to other students, and you should want that as well. Um, however, um, depending on uh, how you view recruitment, uh, in some cases it's easier to form a relationship with the person teaching the classes. Like, that's the best way to go. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out. Uh, sometimes it does work out, but the students aren't interested. Um, you know, you want to try to get the, the best uh, of both worlds. Um, and you need your peers to support that. I can't speak for you folks, but at my institution, uh, my faculty peers are not interested whatsoever in going to the high schools. They, are, they have too much time to dedicate to the research. That is their exclusive goal. Uh, tenure or otherwise. They just don't want to go to the high schools because they don't see the value. Um, and I'm trying to change their focus, their perception of going out to, to the high schools and forming relationships with folks like Melissa uh, while doing it. Um, so, by uh, assisting Melissa um, with her program, and I'm actually an advisor mm -hmm. for, for your program. So, that's uh, one piece of the CV complete, uh, getting that service check mark there. Um, I'm able to help you improve your programming, and in turn, that helps mine, especially if I'm able to recruit your students. So I go on site, we create some specific curricula or programming, uh, something to immerse your students in. They improve as a result, and of course, I see the benefit of that maybe a year or two down the line. Um, I also gain a really great understanding of the pressures that you're under. Which I'll explain. Yes, which she will explain in detail. 
Um, and I certainly learned that some things you can't fix, state-mandated testing, state-mandated curriculum, the uh, expectations that are placed on you just to maintain your employment, right. um, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, some things you don't want to fix as a result, but you can tweak and, and make minor adjustments along the way. So, uh, what do you get in exchange for lost research time? Curricular development on the high school level, ultimately that comes back to you, pays dividends. Uh, excellent one-on-one -on -one time with prospective students. You know, what's really cool about this is that a lot of your students follow uh, my department's social media, but then they find me and follow my Instagram and see the work that I'm doing. It allows for a more kind of saturated, uh, interesting relationship there. Uh, in fact, I, I see your students, I was just at Kent, not too long ago, and I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I see your student, and she's like, oh my god, it's RJ, hey, how's it going? And I'm thinking, hey, it's wonderful to see you, student, that I saw two years ago. Um, thanks for not coming to Youngstown, but I'm glad you're in college. I'm really glad you're in college, and I'm really glad you're in a design program. Um, so moving on, a unique understanding of the state-mandated pressures on high school faculty, uh, an understanding of your ecosystem and what that really looks like and how uh, I can work within it, even as just uh, a helpful participant. And it is complex, no doubt. Uh, I think about uh, how our, our universities work and function when they work and function, and uh, it, this is much more complex. Uh, develop strong relationships, again, with students, faculty, and administrators, and the ability to cast influence on programming that will ultimately send better students, more informed students, your way. So here's an example of some of Melissa's students um, in my classroom at YSU. Look at the enthusiasm. I yeah. Yeah. You see? They're like... <laughs> she is really interested. This is a morning class? This, yeah, we were yeah, early in the morning. Well, it's a morning class on a Friday. Yeah. So, uh, no more. yeah, they're, they're really interested. Um, we invited them up to campus, and I'll, I'll talk, talk more about this project momentarily, but we set them down in our labs. They work with my students. We, we uh, collaborate on the City of You rebranding project, and they all of a sudden started waking up, oh, started yeah, having like, fun. As soon as they knew they could get some coffee and relax with the college kids, they were all about it. Yeah, yeah. and I think they want a Dunkin' Donuts on they your did. campus now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is an example of uh, some of the work that they put together. Now, keep in mind, you know, don't look at people like, oh my god, it's terrible. Well, you know, they're very They're high school. They're yeah. playing around. Sure. They're 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. um, but to have their work featured in the McDonough in a serious mm -hmm. exhibition venue uh, is really cool. And to contribute work that will, in some form or another, be published through this campaign is uh, legitimizing. There's uh, our students all working together. So uh, that, that one student in the center, he's actually uh, in his late 30s. So it's really cool to see him work with these young kids. And he was, he was surprisingly effective. That's really good. Yeah. That's the McDonough. So what we're doing here is we're setting up their work for a critique. And this is when we first got their, like, I, I'll just, yeah, um, RJ came to our school, did a little um, preface with the students on what he was expecting out of them. And then we spent about a week um, gathering ideas, each of the students coming up with their own ideas for the City of View project. And this is their initial setup. We went down to the McDonough Museum, which is a beautiful museum next to Youngstown State. We had the kids post all their stuff on there. And then we just did very informal critiques. And for some of my students, that was the first time um, that they've ever had anybody else besides myself or people in my school look at their work. So it is intimidating at first, and some of them were talking to the wall, and they wouldn't want to turn around and talk to us. And, even those that talk. And even those that talk, talk, talk to the yeah. wall. You know, they were so scared. But then once they did it, and, you know, the more we keep doing these things, it's just a definite win-win on everybody's part. So, uh, Melissa, I'll let you talk, you know, you talk about uh, your background here. Okay, so um, I've been at the Career Technical Center for 25 years. Um, obviously, I was a designer in the field. In order to work at a career tech school, you have to be in your field to work there. Um, I started uh, 25 years ago in 
politics and things uh, were very different than they are now. Uh, we didn't get evaluated like we do now. Um, it was pretty much you could do whatever you wanted in your classroom. I had full reign. Um, you know, none of this pressure from the state was on me until maybe about 10 years ago when they're like, no, you're very accountable. You must do this, 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 and this. And part of my evaluation as a teacher is I need to know where those kids go after school. If they are not placed in a university that is part of my program, like if they choose another major, that's a notch against me. If they are employed at Dunkin' Donuts and not in our field, that is a notch against me. I mean, you're talking 25 high school students that are maybe at the most 16, 17, 18 years old on the average. They don't know what they want to do. I mean, I'm exposing them for two years and hopefully giving them a great experience, but I cannot make everybody be a designer. You know, they're gonna, just like you change your major in college, they're going to change their major, but it's a notch against me. And um, we have 14 schools that feed into our school, so they can choose 22 different career tech programs. Um, they're coming from rural, suburbia, and urban, uh, those 14 school districts. So some of them, even though Youngstown State is 20, literally 20 minutes away, have never been to the city of Youngstown or to Youngstown State. So when RJ came you know, to my program, and he had some of my former students, that had gone on, that he had met, and that's how we kind of made this uh, collaboration. Youngstown State did not want to work with us in the past. They didn't want to have anything to do with high school. They were like, no, you guys are high school, we're college, you know, whatever. But then RJ comes along, and it was like this breath of fresh air that we embraced because I have wanted to get my students in there somehow to see it, to experience, to have an articulation, just to make it nice, because it's a win-win. I mean, I'm winning on my end, he's winning on his end, the kids are winning because they're benefiting from all this knowledge. So um, it's been a really great partnership. So RJ came out the very first time, and we did a client-based project. That was, what, like two years ago? Yes. Two years ago, we said, we're going to bring a client in that maybe has no funds, that wants a logo, she's going to pitch her idea to our um, students, and RJ was the art director, and he had all the kids, like, you know, in their little teams, and then the very final second, he'd be like, you're fired, and you're going over to this team, and you're fired, and you're, so they, they were maybe working for like oh, two weeks I on this project, and then we would fire them, or he'd fire them, and he'd move them, and they're like, what? I'm presenting to them, and they're like, yeah, you stink, you're fired, you're going over to this, this team now, so it really gave them a chance at a real world experience, and then they had to literally, again, first time they're ever presenting to a client, but we made them stand up, um, we brought the client in that day, they were professional and they pitch their right here they pitched to um, Nicole this is the logo that that actually won for her Garden View Acres she is a very organic um, farm has these very strange uh, fruits and vegetables that are like green or like purple carrots and all these different things so she wanted something very simple and um, the students pitched it and that's the one that won and then we ultimately made it into banners and letterhead and everything else that she needed so and you can handle that in house too yeah yeah I can handle everything in house like I have a full production in my um, in my classroom as well so we do like we we design and we print both now I apologize if you just went blind because of the use of papyrus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was making my text to you. Did you it's say why did you? This is what the client wanted because we had so many. Trust me, when we Mine's said we had so many strong designs, and we're like, really? Like, yeah. but she, yeah. this is what we she actually learned. had a lot of really strong work, but we, they we chose did. this, and you know that's a part of the the learning that's experience. It. Right, that um, is. I mean. And yeah. you know what? She was thrilled. She, she was. was over the moon thrilled, she and and it was free. And it, it was free. Yeah. yeah. So she's a new business, and everything's free. She could care So uh, the second project we did was the City View project, of which you've seen <laughs> some pictures on already. Uh, to make a long story short, my myself and my students are responsible for rebranding the city of Youngstown. We received a one hundred thousand dollar advertising budget. This is real money, uh, and I needed a design army at this point. Um, and I recruited Melissa and her students to, of course, put that work together. But more importantly, I wanted citizens of the city and of the county to be able to cast their messaging in and, and have a hand in its creation. So uh, you're going to see more photos of that as the presentation. And mind you, like I said, my kids had some of them never been to Youngstown. So they're like, how are we branding a city that we don't know anything about? Hence why then we 
travel down to Youngstown yep. and to YSU. Again, win-win. Um, this is a photo of one of my seniors working with uh, Melissa students and uh, informing their their perspective on the work and eventually this work went through a lot of different uh, iterations um, and the students I think your students oh, really love this so much yeah. knowledge because then they took their designs that they did at our level brought it the, you can see they're they're very poorly um, designed yeah look right at that there. gradient yeah um, <laughs> right there and she thought this was fantastic and I'm like I'm just gonna let you fly and then um, she took it at this level and then eventually worked with a college student to bring it up to a much for me this was actually kind of hysterical. liberating yes. it, yeah it was hysterical <laughs> but it was also liberating it's like wow these kids they know a lot about design but they have so much more to learn mm -hmm. and I'm going to be able to mold and craft this talent and uh, you know this work I forget her name Medina Medina this work actually conceptually was actually pretty she strong. had a great idea she just yeah. didn't know how to like there it is now yeah so um, this is uh, the second iteration, so we're still working through it, but you know, it's becoming more minimal. It's becoming more focused. There's hierarchy. Like there. you know, as a as you know, a professor or a teacher, you could say stuff to them till you're blue in the face. The minute some outsider comes in and says that font stinks, you should maybe use it. They're like, oh my gosh, they said my font stinks. I should do it. yes, because I've said it 20 times and you didn't listen to me. But now a college kid says it or RJ says it, and they're like, oh RJ. Wow, we really like, here. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah. it's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I wanted to move on from, from the work experiences a little bit and talk about some other pieces that, that maybe you folks could uh, engage with your local high schools or Votech programs. Uh, this year we received a mini grant from an arts organization based out of Columbus called Puffin Foundation West. And um, it was just a small grant for printing. The idea was uh, my students and Melissa's students are going to create social cause posters that um, highlight issues of the Youngstown community. And we were going to use that money to print a ton of 11 by 17s and just distribute them throughout the, throughout the city. And um, what ended up happening is it, it blew up. All of a sudden, Columbiana County Career and Tech Center wanted involved. And then Trumbull County Tech Center wanted involved. And I'm thinking, yeah, come on in, but... And I'm like, Melissa's my girl, I'm like, not going to... No, 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 no. Not I have to um, show the wealth now. And then Youngstown City Schools wants to be involved, but um, they bought in. Mm -hmm. All right, so we were able to get matching funds, not only from those schools, be it in kind or otherwise, but from my college and my university. So we're working with over $2,500 right now. Think about how many tabloid posters that will, mm -hmm. that will uh, print. So it was really cool to be able to blow this up and everyone can be involved. But MCCTC is at the forefront. <laughs> uh, says that now. <laughs> so your students have improved the works on the City View campaign since uh, since we did that work, and then yes, and then I just think again. overall working with the college students and having the opportunity to work with RJ, they're thinking design on a different level, um, trying to push themselves. I, I watch them um, as they're working and trying to push themselves to a higher level. So with that, we've you know. Men through, went through many revisions and most of their City of You stuff I was able to um, send off to art competitions. Uh, their final requirement for me as a senior is they have to have a portfolio review night where I bring in people like RJ and different people in the industry that critique their work and it's a beautiful art opening for the kids and you know they see all their stuff and it's somebody else again saying this is you know what you should be having in your portfolio, this isn't. So we've used the City of You campaign now over and over um, um, and it's been very beneficial to the students. And you can see RJ in my classroom um, explaining part of the CAVU project. He came to my class just one day, um, and then we visited YSU uh, two days. So we also, besides visiting and having the students work with our students, they got a tour of the campus, they got a tour of the school, they got a tour of like the area. So it was very eye-opening for some of them that had never been there. And now probably half of my students this year are going to go down to YSU and in you know be in the art department in some aspect. So this is my high school classroom. One thing I love about this photo is you can see what the kids are working on. And <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do yeah. with They're not paying attention. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no,
Can you send me one? I, I will. <laughs> so how do they? How do these students handle the transition from Melissa's program to ours? All right. Uh, they've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me. Um, they because they've been on campus. They've had a tour. They've seen our curriculum. They understand. The, the rigors of our curriculum and what would be expected of them over the course of four years. Um, but most importantly, they gain that experience to their, as I say, their friendly neighborhood hometown university that they never have been to, surprisingly. Um, and that is not an uncommon symptom. No, it not, might all tend yeah. to, you know, they want to go yeah. to the Columbus College of Art and Designs. They want to go to Savannah. They, they have no funds to their name, but they're going to spend $400,000 to go to school, and not that those schools aren't great, and I'm happy when they get scholarships to go, but why is shoes right in their back yeah. pocket, and they can get a great education there, so they just don't know it. YSU is actually, the, I believe, the cheapest mm -hmm. uh, state-affiliated university in Ohio. It costs under ten grand a year. Yeah. Um, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can get a great education uh, for a good value. Um, and that's one thing that they start mm -hmm. learning as they get closer and closer to high school yeah. graduation. Um, so by the time they're ready, ready to graduate from my program, and this is a very, very important outcome. By the time they're ready to graduate from my program, her students, after they've gone through her program and mine, have a higher chance of getting employed before they graduate or shortly after than anyone else. Um, and that's because they essentially had six years worth of design education. Um, they're more ambitious, they're more focused, there's more breadth in their portfolios, their work is stronger, their ambition is realistic and unstoppable. Um, so it's, it's very exciting to see those students thrive. And in fact, one of her alumni uh, subbed for me when I was on parental leave. Um, and she was at the time 24. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, it's really cool to see a 24 year old uh, adjunct professor. And, you know, kids are your best uh, marketing tool, they're your best word of mouth. Like, I don't really have to recruit much for my program. This, my students do it, but now that they're working with RJ, they're recruiting for him too because they're talking up the design department at YSU because they've seen it and experienced it. So, really, they're your best. They're, they're your best marketing Yeah, there's a bit of a domino tool. effect there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, moving forward, for us, what comes next is the future. Our partnership plans continue. More grant writing. That fulfills scholarship for me, okay? Uh, more on-site visits. There's service. More campus visits. That's obviously great for us, not that it hits teaching service or scholarship. More unique programming. Service and scholarship. Teach, uh, study teaching and learning. More, more communication, and if you're paying attention, I'm watching communication spell room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, what can your university real, realistically offer you? Uh, I can't speak for, for your universities, but mine has been very uh, supportive of this partnership and others. So uh, scholarships. I would like to be able to create a small $500 kind of scholarship to incentivize a couple of your students to come to our program. You've got to spend money to make money. That's just smart business. Uh, grant writing. It's hard, can be fun, but benefits all involved, not just our students collectively, but our organizations, especially if they can put their logo on it. Uh, matching grants. So my university, my department, my college, matching any funds that I get through grant writing. So the Puffin grant is a great example of that, especially if it's a smaller grant. The, uh, the, the narrative there is the university college department, they want to boost what exists. So if I get a $10,000 grant, they're not going to be as interested in giving us more money because that's already a substantial amount. Uh, travel funding to support quality programming. I don't get paid to go visit you. I don't get paid to, I don't, the university doesn't pay my tolls, they don't pay my gas money, etc. Melissa might buy me lunch or coffee or something, and that's all I need. But um, hopefully your university would be open to that. Um, mine is, but I spend all my travel money on seeing you wonderful faces here. Um, articulation agreements, collective grown. Um, <laughs> We, because of the shape of my program, we can't really offer an articulation agreement for graphic design because of the foundation year. Now, eventually, someday, maybe there's something that we can work with, but unfortunately, you know, even if I came out and taught a class, because you have an adult education <laughs> program too, even if I taught that class, it would not transfer in. Right. So there's a lot of bureaucracy <laughs> and red tape there. 
uh, on-campus programming, actually offering classes that students can take that are not honors-based classes. So your students would maybe pay a small uh, fee to take a six-week class. Um, we do offer that. And then uh, recruiting high school faculty as evening or online adjuncts, uh, provided that the quality in, uh, is there and they're interested. So when you retire, I'm yeah, yeah. definitely recruiting you because I, <laughs> I need an adjunct. Um, which of and course, I was at YSU yes. a while ago, a long time ago. Um, and here's a, a here's their portfolio night. Um, they they just got done doing their senior portfolio night, so you can see the city of you down at the bottom. Like mean, they used it pretty much in one of their pieces that they could have. See him again. Now, uh, her work, Kate. Kate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> This is, uh, this is the first version of her work in the museum, and conceptually it was strong, it was simple. Uh, she went know. down, she took those photos, like, yeah. on her own, down, downtown. Custom like, built from the ground up. Tapes on the back of the paper instead of on the corner. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? Yeah, just Presentation. very meticulous. <laughs> That's the kind of student we need, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. um, one thing, just a general disclaimer, not everyone wants to partner. Um, there are people that are not interested. There was a time when I sent over a hundred different emails to high schools in my county and I only got maybe three or four responses. And one of them was from a second grade teacher. And you're, you bet your ass I went out there. And it was fun. It was awesome. We played Super Mario and it was great. But uh, not everyone wants to partner. Uh, not everyone is interested in collaborating no matter who benefits. So, you know, Put, put yourself out there. Can I throw him aside? Yes. There? But now that we have partnered, everybody wants him. And he's kind of mine. So yeah. I'm like, now I'm like getting territorial. Because I'm like, Shut oh, up. nobody wanted him before. But now everybody wants him when they For see sure. all the, like, pre, like pre, you know, and it is. It is mm. smart. It's a marketing game. I mean, too. So we're getting a lot of marketing from my school and his university. And, you know, we're getting a lot of good press from it. So, filling the voids. If uh, graphic design programming in the high school level doesn't exist uh, in your area, create it, all right? Uh, you know, you don't have to have a Votech program handed to you. Um, even like a general art class, like I grew up in a very, very small rural area. I had like 40 people in my graduating class. But my art teacher would have loved to have had like a graphic design professional come in and teach me Photoshop. Um, you know, create those opportunities for yourself. They're, they're literally just sitting there waiting. You can create great strides and success in the areas of teaching, scholarship, and service through these partnerships that in turn influences you and your college level programming. Continue on constant improvement through steady collaboration. Uh, ideally will yield well for your CV and your tenure packet. And uh, you can get your research in, you can get everything else in one fell swoop. And yeah, I can't say this enough. Um, I'm so thankful that RJ came and you know just extended the olive branch because as high school teachers, we are begging to work with you guys and know what we should be doing on our end. Like I don't want to send you know very unprepared students. I want to send very well prepared students to your program. So we are begging to have input and partnerships. And if you have not reached out to a career tech center yet. Please do. And like RJ said, if you don't have one in your area, I mean, even an art club where the students do stuff after school started, and then you'll have those kids that maybe come over. And it might be a little bit of an investment in your time, but it's very well worth it to get to get some students to your programs that are higher notch that really, really want to be there. Because, you know, in college, they still don't know what they want to be either. But hopefully the ones that go through my program for two years know that they're interested in design and then will go on to get your numbers. Questions? Anybody have yeah. anything from both of us? What do you got? Yes. Okay, so you brought, their, you brought your high school into your art classes and yep. you worked together like mentoring each other. What, what, what class was this of yours? This was actually uh, my graphic design practicum course, otherwise known as Youngstown Design Works. So this is a senior level, elite level course where uh, students are recruited into it. Okay. So they can't just willingly take the class. So her students were working with my best, absolute okay. best students. Right. Yeah. And we were there two days. Yep. Two days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to hear this story. Uh, recruitment is one of those things that's so regional. 
right? And it's so local. So if you're in a metro area, it's a completely different problem. If you're in a really rural area, like I am, I'm in Idaho, right? I stay with only two major universities. Um, so it, it, it's interesting, you know, you're, you're selling us on the idea of recruiting. Personally, I love recruiting. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. But yeah. the university doesn't support me in that. And that they want university level recruiters to go out and sell the whole institution. Yeah. They will not support direct recruiting for programs. They want someone to go in and talk the whole shop, right? So it's an uphill battle for me to convince them. So we had like a recruiting retreat recently and the vice provost came in and um, talked about how well, you know, we, we, we objected, right? And said, hey, we want department college program centric recruiting. Um, and he goes, well, what if we take the recruiters into you guys and you train them? Oh, oh geez. And give them talking points, and blah, blah, blah. So that's so, where that conversation so. was left. And this is like an indirect oh, recruit, it's true. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think like an almost like an indirect recruitment because right. the kids didn't really know, like, our back end of it, we right. were just working collaboratively together. So now they're like, oh, they got a taste. Because I love going to the mm -hmm. high schools and, and working mm -hmm. with the kids and talking. And, yeah. and you know, on that point, like, I could care less about the numbers. Right. You know, right. I, I, you don't even know. I'm interested in quality outcomes, mm -hmm. particularly student learning outcomes. So if at the end of the day work. I've got that, then I can move forward. You know, the kids are going to go to school whether they want to or not, and they're going to go wherever they want to if they go to school. And they do. Uh, and I have no control over that, nor do I want control over that. But just to expose them. I think the yeah, exposure absolutely. was necessary That's because, like I said, they've never really even been down there. And just to have him, you know, um, take so much time with them and work with them and his students. And, you know, we got to tour the whole department. And some of them didn't even know that there was this beautiful art department down in their yeah. backyard. Or they're, they're not even aware of the career paths. No, right, 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 exactly. I'm constantly dealing with the exactly. starting artist stereotype. Like, yeah. yes. degree is just right. degree in failure. And I go, I, they're all looking at yeah. their phones. I go, well, what's on your phone? Sure. All this yeah. stuff. I go, well, who did that? We created Designers. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to show something that recently occurred to me. Um, I teach at a rural institution in Ohio, upper peninsula Michigan. Okay. And we have an enrollment um, crisis at the university in general, and we do. And so um, I was contacted by a low tech, I'm going to turn again. Low tech, yeah. A low tech director in mid state, which probably is five, six hours drive from me. And one requirement for his students was that they had to show their portfolio to someone outside of their classroom and get feedback. Mm -hmm. So naturally, this young high school student is not driving up to visit me. Sure. He's only junior, I believe. And so I did a Skype portfolio discussion. It was lovely. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sure. She sent me the slides ahead, PDF. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, she did all the talking. She was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to come to my institute. Eventually. Right, see, yeah. that's great. But I, that was the first time I ever did that, and I thought that was just fantastic. Yeah. So, for some people yeah. that are far from various places, that might be another way of yeah. outreach. Yeah, even like we distance learning, to anything. Mm -hmm. Great. We did. We did. When they had questions for RJ yep. yeah. and he couldn't be there, we would um, d digitally do it too, yeah. which was nice. Todd? Um, I, I, I'm not really familiar. The academic systems down here. I mean, I, I live up in Ontario, and so it's a, the, the, the system's a little bit different. But I, I think you touched on when you talked about articulation. But um, one of the things that we do is we'll do um, summer classes where the students have to pay to get into it, but it's it's um, three or five weeks or seven weeks, mm -hmm. and um, it's taught by one of our <coughs> faculty. Um, so. The money that comes into the school directly pays for the faculty, um, and it, but it is dual credit. We call it a dual credit. Oh, so, nice. so, this, nice. so they do get credit. Not, I don't think it replaces any of the courses once they get in, but it's just it's it's a college credit. So so maybe it would mean that they can take less classes once they take le less in their course load once right. they get in. So it doesn't replace any courses, but it is credit that maybe yeah, like, it's a little taste. Load. That's yeah, nice. I like that. So right. what's the cost? Is it? Is it I don't know. I actually yeah. don't know. They 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 they, they fill up. So, so wow. in, in that context, like yeah. that would be a great scholarship opportunity. That would be right. really yeah. Right. Yeah. And the other thing we're doing, and, and this is just going to be a pilot thing we're doing in September, is I'm 
actually going to be teaching on weekend on Saturdays, and I'll be taking in um, high school students. On and I, it has, it's yet to be determined. It'll be either be a one eight hour day or maybe a three, five, four, or five hour days. You know that kind of thing. Where that's our exit. Just, yeah, <laughs> uh, but same thing. Where where it, so it's high school students from different high schools too. Nice. It's not just coming. From, yeah. So so mm -hmm. we go into the high schools or our recruitment people go into the high schools and say this is an option if any of you are interested. Mm -hmm. They can pay the school to come and take that class with mm -hmm. a college professor mm -hmm. um, and then and, and then get college credit for that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Um, at our school too, it's similar. Okay. The students can, um, they have this associate where the kids can take for free classes at our university at the college level. The only catch is that they have to have their own transportation. Hmm. Is it during the school year? During the school year. So that's like what we, we call it a college college credit plus. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's the same thing as the regulation mm -hmm. where they can do that. But again, it and a lot of the students want to know that they can do free. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we are doing that now. Where you know, some of the better students will come and take some of their classes. And they don't have to do that to be free. At that point, we just let them in each and every depending on the courses. Um, and that's been working out pretty well with those cool. students. But, um, you might have to check too, because at Kaya, I think at the KIZ grants in Pennsylvania have um, a lot of that where they provide that for the high schools so that they pay. And they can take biology classes, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but they can usually do public, inner city public high schools can do that. Great. Gentleman in the back. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just curious, of, you may have said this, um, but what was the <coughs> Oh man! And how does it relate to your curriculum? Like, how, how do you incentivize it in any way? Like, there's new campaigns you've chosen, and how it relates to the collaborative. Yes. Process. So the hundred thousand dollars provided by the city is essentially startup funds. The money is split is split seventy thirty seventy towards advertising expense, uh, thirty towards service. That thirty thousand dollars is used to. Uh, essentially pay our students as practicing graphic designers. So there's a, a budget of 30 grand I'm sitting on that it's going to essentially hire an army of my designers and pay them. So there's one tangible outcome. They get real world experience. Even if they weren't employed through my design works program, all of that is legitimate client based work. So they're still getting that authenticity. Through the, through the advertising budget, we're buying everything. TV spots, billboards, t-shirts, merchandise, everything. Now, relative to what her students produced, I'm looking at this model as something that exists 20 years from now. So the more ideas that we have, the better. So that last student, uh, Kate, her work will actually be implemented. Um, and ideally speaking, I want that for all of her students right there. Yeah, this, this campaign will be implemented. Now, what that looks like, it depends on what the mayor wants, what his economic <laughs> development yeah. director uh. wants, the communications, etc. But we have these assets in play. So this could all of a sudden be a bus stop ad. It could be uh, an ad at a movie theater. It doesn't really matter. So we have our stockpile, and then we pick and choose uh, the communications relative to what the intent is, and we move on from there. So, well, thanks, everyone. Okay, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.